of New York. Uh, Congressman Henserling, you're among the leadership there. Uh, these are strong words. The president says you want to end Medicare as we know it. Uh, it's a powerful accusation. Well, what the president has proposed is to allow Medicare to go bankrupt. Uh, that's what the trustees to Medicare say. Uh, we know that Medicare and Medicaid uh, in Social Security, I mean, programs that frankly have been of great benefit to our parents and grandparents are morphing into cruel Ponzi schemes uh, for our children and our grandchildren. And what does the president propose? Well, I'm going to set up some artificial numbers and then I'm going to have rationing on steroids and price controls on steroids and somehow that's going to solve the problem. When it comes to Medicaid, there really isn't a proposal and for Social Security, he doesn't even acknowledge the problem, and under current law, our children are going to get a 22% benefit cut. And so if the president has no plan, and, and let there be no doubt, Wolf, this was not a plan for America to win the future. This was a speech for the president to try to win re-election. All right. Uh, let me bring Anthony Weiner into this conversation. I want you to respond to that, but also explain your tweet on Twitter earlier in the day. I read it. Uh, why I'm not president, you wrote my version. The GOP plan is a disaster, and I'll chew my arm off before I sign it. Uh, all right, uh, Congressman, talk about that. Well, that's a little blunt way of, of putting what I think the president summarized, frankly, in a very kind of gentle way. Now, Jeb didn't answer your question about Medicare, so I will. Yes, the Republicans are proposing to end Medicare as we, the, as we know it. They're proposing to say to seniors in the future that in order for you to get health care, we're going to give you a coupon and you go out and do your best to shop for health care. I can tell you when people like my father retired just south of 65, he couldn't even get health insurance, let alone health insurance that was paid for by a voucher. Look, the president gave an adult speech today about what our problem is, but also laid down the line and says we are not prepared as a country to give up on Medicare. We're not prepared to buy into the mythology that Jeb just perpetuated. Social Security adds zero dollars to the deficit. That's a fact. In fact, far from borrowing money from China, we borrow most of the money to support other things in the All government right. from the Social Security Trust Fund. And we're going to fight to protect those Go ahead, uh, Congressman Hanserling, and respond. Well, one, it's interesting. The only people who have actually rated Medicare are the Democrats. Anthony voted for Obamacare. They took a half a trillion dollars out of Medicare to try to go and fund Obamacare, number one. Social Security, we've already heard from the trustees, is cash flowing negative now. And so what we have are Democrats who are trying to perpetuate this myth, not give the facts to the American people, that programs are going broke. The Republican plan is simple. We are going to make sure that seniors and those who are near seniors stay on the current plan, but we're going to save and secure these programs by future generations. And we believe that ultimately market competition, as opposed to price controls and rationing, is what's going to right. help our seniors. Let me, let me just be precise, uh, Congressman Weiner, because the president, at the end of his speech, he was also addressing the liberals, the progressives of his own Democratic Party and saying, you know what, you guys, and I think he was talking uh, directly to you and some of your colleagues, Congressman Weiner, you guys have to grow up as well, and you have to deal with Medicare, Medicaid, these entitlements, otherwise the country is going to go broke. A hundred percent correct. You know, it's interesting watching the schizophrenia of the Republican Party. They criticized Democrats for trying to get efficiencies in Medicare and adding 10 years to its life expectancy. So how do they respond? By slashing hundreds of billions of dollars from it and ending it as we know it. Look, Democrats are the party trying to protect Medicare. But I agree with what the president says. We all have to have things on the table. That's why when we look at the $1.65 trillion in tax cuts for the wealthy that Bush gave, the, the, that Bush handed out, that created this deficit today, we have to say, you know what, maybe millionaires and billionaires have to wait at the end of the line before the next tranche of tax cuts. Are you ready to deal with taxes, uh, put that on the table as part of an effort to end this debt crisis right now, Congressman Henserling? Well, listen, the taxes that the president is proposing is going to do nothing but crush jobs. Second of all, he has absolutely no mechanism to ensure that these taxes don't fuel anything but even more government spending. He fundamentally doesn't deal with the problem. We are on the verge of being the first generation in America's history to leave the next generation with a lower standard the of living. President says he, by won't, the way, he won't by sign the way, into law an extension of the Bush tax cuts for those families earning more than $250,000 Which a is going to fall principally so, so on a can, lot of small what, business people, which is the job engine in America. So, so what we can have you millions do if, of he, unemployed. If, if he lives up to that commitment, Congressman, what are you going to do about it? 
Well, there will be an intervening election soon, and the American people will have their say. Again, the president didn't present a plan today. He presented an election speech, which is why on Sunday, this wasn't unveiled by his OMB director, by his secretary of treasury. It was unveiled by his campaign manager. This is taking class warfare to an all-new high. We will not have jobs in America as long as we have this debt hanging overhand. There's not going to be healthy job creation. And the president punts again and says, well, here's the answer. I ignored my first fiscal responsibility commission, so now I'm going to right. create a I, second I, one. Maybe Congressman, I'll listen to them. I'm going to bring Congressman Weiner in, in a second. But very quickly, because I asked Gene Sperling, the president's economic advisor in the last hour, under his plan, the president's plan, with General Electric, which made $14 billion uh, in profit last year worldwide, $5 billion here in the United States, they paid no taxes to the federal government. Under the Republicans' plan, Congressman Hensarling, would GE pay any tax? Oh, absolutely. We get rid of all the loopholes. And what we do is we bring rates down so that they can be competitive uh, with our European competitors. So wouldn't that what be a tax does, increase? Some of the purists, does is uses uh, Congressman, the some of the purists in the Republican Party, some of the purists say that's a tax increase then if you do that, if you get rid of those yeah. loopholes. No, we say we use that in order to bring rates down. We flatten, we make the tax code flatter, fairer, simpler, more competitive so that we can create jobs. What the president does is simply raise the effective tax rates. And I don't know anybody in America who thinks that if you increase taxes on their employer that they're going to be able to hire your out-of-work neighbor, much less give you a raise. Right, let's go ahead and respond to that, Congressman Weiner. Well, let me just say, we actually have a laboratory for this. In the Bush years, we had gave about $1.67 trillion of tax cuts, mostly to very wealthy people. It was the first eight-year period in American history we created no net jobs. And they left us with nearly a trillion dollars in deficit. We tried that model. It hasn't worked out pretty, fairly well. I think all of us want to pay no taxes. But it's simply a question of fairness. Under the president's plan, the middle class and those struggling to make it won't see a tax increase. Under the Republican plan, not only will there be a giant tax increase for millionaires and billionaires, how are they going to pay for it? Eliminating Medicare. Those are the simple facts of the proposal. All right, well, now, what the facts are, are you are proposing the highest tax increase in America's history on job creators and expecting for there to be more jobs. In the Republican you plan, all we do is prevent your tax increase including the Wrong. tax increase that is in Obamacare. Wrong. It's Let's the look Democrats at the who are I raising voted. taxes Jeb. on job creators. Jeb, I voted for the stimulus, which had the biggest tax cut for the middle class. You voted no on it. I'm the tax cutter in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Convince the American the people of that, Anthony. Good luck. Gentlemen, uh, I'm doing. Uh, thanks very much today. An opening salvo from both sides. Uh, this is going to be in increasingly, increasingly important, though, in the coming weeks. Appreciate it very much, Congress.